Merry Christmas to you all this day, and may the peace of God which has come in Jesus Christ be with you this day. The past few years, there has uh, been some kerfuffle at times over whether one is to say happy holidays or Merry Christmas. There are those who are passionate about making sure that we say Merry Christmas and not Happy Holidays. And while these conversations are all a part of living in a culture that is without a doubt a post-Christian culture, and nothing seems to be pointing to the fact that it's going to be going back in the other direction anytime soon, we need to understand that something more important is going on and is needed than whether to say Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays. You see, brothers and sisters in Christ, I find no hope in the Walmart greeter telling me Merry Christmas rather than Happy Holidays. Now, by all means, tell people Merry Christmas. That is wonderful. That is good. It is a joyous greeting this time of year. But I just want you to be prepared. I want you to be prepared, not necessarily to receive pushback. That might happen. But I want you to be prepared to actually tell someone why Christmas is truly merry. Isaiah 52, verse 7 how beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. What is it that makes Christmas good news? We as Christian people who know that Christmas is all, what, is, what it is all about can oftentimes miss the reality that the world around us does not understand why we gather here today. The world around us may use the words that we are familiar with. They may use words like Christmas, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. They use these words, but the reality is the world around us does not know nor does it understand why we gather, why we say Merry Christmas. One example of this is if you just simply look at what culture produces. If you take a look at most Christmas movies, what are they all about? Or at least most all of them about. Almost every single Christmas movie or holiday movie, whatever you want to call them, is going to have one specific focus. It's not a bad focus, but it's not the main foundation of Christmas. They're always about the fact that family is important. You can go down the line, if you just go through them, a couple of, or one of my favorites, Home Alone, right? What is Home Alone all about? It's about Kevin realizing how important his family is and his family realizing how important Kevin is. His neighbor needs to make reconciliation with his son, They'll even give a tip of the cap to the real reason for the season with the scene in the Christmas in the, in the church. But the foundational message of that movie is that family is important. We just watched another one in the Lane household not too long ago, and you could almost follow the storyline to a T. They write themselves. There's a problem within the family, Christmas time comes around, holiday season comes around, and poof, oh, we realize how important our family is. And there's nothing wrong with that message in and of itself. But unfortunately, if that's what Christmas becomes, we're falling into the trap of losing sight on the foundation of who we are as followers of Jesus and we can even fall into it in our own conversations, right? What do we usually talk about when we have conversations with 
with uh, friends and acquaintances during the Christmas season. Oh, what are your plans? Are you going to see family? Are you going to spend time with friends? What it, we talk about that in, in that way. And again, nothing wrong with that as long as we understand what the foundation of it all is. So if someone asked you, what is Christmas about, what would you say? We might talk about the birth of Jesus. We might talk about the birth of a Savior. We might have a lot of different ways of describing what took place on that first Christmas. But I'll give a shout out to Deb in Bible study uh, this past uh, about two, three weeks ago. She says, well, why don't we just say that God was born? That might actually begin a conversation with people. Whoa, what do you mean? God was born? Now we're going to have to explain that, aren't we? We're going to have to unpack that a little bit. But that's really what we hear John describing. We hear John describing that in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were created were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not has not overcome it we jump down to verse 14 and the word became flesh the word that was with god the word that was God became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This Advent season, we, uh, in our midweek messages, we took a, an opportunity to unpack that a little bit or expand that understanding of Jesus and how all the way even back into the Old Testament we could see the second person of the Trinity the Son of God the word that would be made flesh was already active amongst the people of God working with them guiding them helping them along the way we talked about all sorts of different ways and uh, that this was unpacked in the Old Testament. You see, the incarnation is, the co- is, is a core piece of the Christian faith. It is something that sets apart the Christian faith from all other religions, that God would dare to become a part of that which he created. Christmas is the fact that God desires to come close to humanity. For all other religions, the goal is for the person to get closer to God. Yet we rejoice with the truth that God has come close to us on that first Christmas. That is why we say Merry Christmas. That is why we rejoice on this day that God has come to be with us so that we can be with him for all eternity. God is observed in the Holy Scriptures as one who is seeking people out, not humans seeking him. From the very beginning, when humanity fell into sin, God has been seeking people out. Genesis 3, 8 and 9 And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden of the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? God seeking out the one he desires to be with. Here is the first example of God going to seek out those who need to be found. The violation of God's word that had been given to Adam, which was told that it would open his eyes to understand so many things, actually brought to him blindness and death. God desire to be seen in the realms of love and mercy, yet now because of sin, God, when we look for him on our own, by our own devices, is only found 
with wrath and judgment. In the first 11 chapters of Genesis, the reader gets a great deal of time and history covered, yet only a little bit about God's interactions with humanity. What we do get, though, in the scriptures is shows that God continues to seek out, desires to be close to, those, to humanity. God seeks out Cain after the murder of his brother. God seeks or sees humanity has become increasingly wicked, yet finds the one who is right in the sight of God and seeks him out and instructs him on how to build an ark. These stories will lead to the call of Abraham in Genesis 12, where we begin to see very clearly who God is and how he intends to make himself known, not only to a few, but to the whole world. Genesis 12, 1 through 3 says this, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make for you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in, all, and in you all the families of earth shall be blessed. God finds Abraham and sends him with a promise that he will be made into a great nation, be given a great name, and be a blessing. Here we see God making a promise of how he would be, make himself known. He was going to create a great nation through which God will make himself known to the world. The blessings of God are not to be turned in on Abram, a great, uh, they are not to be turned in upon himself, but he is the one who is to deliver that to the world around him. Blessing those who he comes in contact with. Already in Genesis 12, we begin to see God's mission is to make himself known to the world. And it is there that we see the message that God desires to be known and the mission of the church come together. You see, the good news of Christmas is that God has, in fact, made himself known. Yes, through his written word, but even more importantly, through the word made flesh. He has revealed his own character by coming, making himself lowly, suffering in various ways, ultimately suffering on a cross. So it is there that we can see the love that God has for all of humanity for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is the good news of the Christian message on Christmas. Not simply that we gather together with those that we love. Again, that's a good thing. But the good news, the reason that we can say Merry Christmas is because God did not stay far off but came close to reveal himself to us. And the blessings that we have are to be used not only for ourselves, but for the world around us. It is amazing that most people, in fact, come to know this Jesus. How? Through the families that they're born into. The sharing of the message from parent to child, from grandparent to grandchild, over and over and over again, generation and generation pass, and the story, the good news of Christmas is passed through the blessing of a family. Now, it's not how all come to know their Savior, but it is amazing how God uses these wonderful blessings. So as, as you gather this Christmas season with those that you love. Rejoice that you have those to gather with. But also remember why we gather. It is because the word has been made flesh. God dwelt among us so that we might be with him for all eternity. It is my hope and my prayer that this is shared in our community, in our families, and with ever whom we have the opportunity to tell Merry Christmas because it truly is 
a reason to be merry, that God would be with us for our good. In Jesus' name, amen.